Well, hey, welcome back, everybody, to the Financial Advisors Workshop. Uh, this is uh, the Four Star Wealth Advisors uh, Media Network, and in the Four Financial Advisor Workshop is where we talk to great practitioners of financial advisor uh, practices in our industry. Uh, there are literally hundreds of thousands of advisors in the country, o over over a million, a couple of million actually, if you include all the insurance advisors out there as well. And there's some really great people in our business, and and Ari Baum is one of them, and he's with us today, and uh, and he's the CEO of his new firm. And let me have you uh, introduce yourself, Ari. Yeah, thank you, thank you for having me on the, uh, I guess on the uh, the Zoom slash podcast. It's uh, always great to connect. And yeah, so I am the uh, founder and CEO of Endurance Well Partners. It's a company that I started about nine years ago after working at all the major wirehouses for about 17 years and finding that there's a better way for clients to conceive, believe, and achieve a work optional lifestyle or generational wealth. Mm -hmm. Nice. Well, good. So you said that you started at other, other firms. Tell us about your your life before endurance wealth and then move we'll from there. No problem. So so like many of my fellow brothers and sister advisors out there, you know, I started in the late nineties, nineteen ninety seven was my entrance into the business. And back yeah. then we were all stockbrokers. You know, I got my yeah. series seven, my series sixty three, and I thought I was king of the mountain. You know, and I'll I'll never forget an early story when I, when I was cold calling. And, you know, we all remember the days when we had to like See, you know, verify the leads to make sure they have enough assets. And I'll never forget one guy told me he had two shares of Berkshire Hathaway. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm sorry, sir. Guys over here buy hundreds and thousands of shares. And then uh, someone next to me is like, dude, you know what Berkshire Hathaway is? And that was, uh, <laughs> you know, you know that, that, that's what we call on the job training, you know? And uh, through the years, you know, I've evolved from being a, a stockbroker to becoming a financial advisor financial planner, ultimately a certified financial planner. And we grew from being more than just buying stocks and bonds to actually making a difference in people's lives, you know? And I could tell you that from having been on the floor of the American Stock Exchange, which now part of the New York Stock Exchange, J.P. Morgan Chase, uh, UBS, Morgan Stanley, you know, I kind of hit a, um, a fork in the road where I said, is this really it? Is this all we're meant to do? Or can I really make more of an impact on people's lives? And that led me down the path to creating Endurance Wealth Partners. So I can honestly tell you that, you know, the work that we do is truly meaningful. You know, I see it in the families that we deal with. You know, we'll talk a little bit later about how I got a family who, whose kids weren't talking to each other for over two years to talk to each other again, because, you know, the expression more money, more problems. So it's very rewarding. Nice. Well, good. So, so you were propelled to start your own firm because you wanted more flexibility than Morgan or any wirehouse could offer you, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, the, the thing that I realized about working at the wirehouses is that they only see what they want you to see. You can only use their, their tech, uh, you know, their tech package. You can only use their, you know, the investments in their universe. And if it's not in their universe, it could be the greatest thing ever. You can't touch it. You know, you know, different philosophies of opinion where some might say, you know, they're doing their due diligence and this and that, but go try to buy a Vanguard fund at a wirehouse, you know, chances are they won't let you. So what I found with having my own firm, I can forge my own path and sit on the same side of the table as my client versus the opposite side of the table. So Ari, now that you're in your own firm, um, tell us some of the things that you, you do with clients that uh, Mother Morgan and some of the other warehouses wouldn't allow. So I have a YouTube channel. <laughs> you can check me out. You know, uh, you know, my, my handle on YouTube is The Iron Advisor. And nice. Yeah, that, that, that pays homage to the marathons and triathlons I love to do. You know, I got a couple on my desk over here, some of the medals. I got, you know, Boston Marathon and some Ironmans. But Iron Man is an Ironman. Okay, I guess. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And, and, and for those of you that don't know, an Ironman is a 2.4 mile swim followed by a 112 mile bike 
followed by a full marathon of 26.2 miles. So, uh, wow. yeah, so, so I raced those for fun. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I actually quite, quite, I raced them as an age group competitor. And what I found is that the discipline that I use in training and racing could be applied to financial planning and, and investing, you know, where you don't want to make emotional mistakes on race day, just like you don't want to make emotional mistakes in the market. So mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of how I tie it together. A little bit of a metaphor there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I noticed you in, in our, in our notes earlier, we, we talked about the Baum strategy as in your name, B-A-U-M, being accomplished and unwavering method. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, yeah. So, so what I've done, what I've learned through client experiences in life is I've developed what I call, I say like this, I've developed and refined a Q4 formula. You know, I look at life in four quadrants, you know, it's family first and always after family is being active because what's the point of having money if you're not healthy enough to enjoy it. Right. The, the third part is to have impact, meaning, you know, in order to receive, you have to give. So I love doing volunteer work and charity work, you know, and the fourth is I love what I do. The old on, you know, the expression, if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. So those four quadrants represent my life and everything I do is within that. And I took that same formula and I applied it to my clients. So the Q4 formula represents financial planning, investment management, insurance, and lending. And by breaking it down into those four quadrants, what we're able to do is we're really able to connect people's money to their lives. Meaning that, you know, you know, most of us work for 40, you know, 40 plus years, right? Now you're 65 and you're retired, right? You are known as the doctor, the lawyer, the advisor, you know, the, the, the business owner. Now you're not doing that anymore. You know, most of them are an identity crisis. So we work with them to help them figure out what their next act is. Because what I found is that for, for many people, that window of achieving your bucket list is getting smaller and smaller. You know, how many 90 year olds or 85 year olds you see climbing, you know, the pyramids of Giza <laughs> or going on camelbacks in Dubai? So you have a window to really achieve things from, let's say, 65, but let's call it 75, eh, close to 80. So we've planned for that, you know, and as Albert Einstein once said, what's the difference between smart and genius? Smart people solve problems. Genius anticipates it. So with our Q4 formula, we're able to anticipate the curveballs that life is going to throw at you and be prepared for it. Right. Nice. Nice. Well, good. So um, you talked also about four truths, right? Mm -hmm. And just to yeah. talk about those a little bit. Yeah. So, so like, as I mentioned before, my, my personal four truths and to each their own, you know, I'm not, I'm not one to judge or impose, right? For me, it's, I love my family. I love what I do. I love being active. And I love making impact. So for me, you know, obviously wife and kids are at the top of the, uh, at the, at, at, at the top of the totem pole. You know, one thing I once heard that stuck with me, but we have four kids, two boys, two girls, you know, you know, for my sons, I'd lie down in the middle of a highway, you know, for them in a heartbeat, like any parent would, for, you know, so I gladly give up my life for my, for my boys, for my daughters. I kill for them, you know, so, you know, my, 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 my daughter is graduating high school this year. So, uh, she has prom coming up. I'm a bit nervous, not going to lie, you know, cause it's my, my little girl. So, uh, yeah. you know, so, so, you know, that, that young man better be very respectful. <laughs> That's all I could say. Otherwise I might not be in the business any, you better be nice to Ari Bao. Uh, 100%, because remember swim, bike, or run. He can't get away from me. Can't get away from you. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, great. So um, tell us about your firm. Uh, and as you founded it in 2014, you're up to over $300 million in, in, in assets under management. Uh, is it just you? Do you have a team of assistants, other advisors? Tell us about that. Yeah. So 
you know, I have an assistant with me. I have a team, a support staff that have become like family to me, you know, and each one has their role in the team. I would say that we actually use COVID as an opportunity to get even closer together. You know, while most people were, you know, were supposed to really keep their distance, you know, we might've been physically distanced, but we keep ourselves socially distant. And we took that same approach with clients as well, you know, and what we're able to do is really get involved in people's lives, you know? So if what's in my assistant here is that a client's kid is going to college, you know, we consider that a moment of truth. Guess what we do? You know, we'll send a t-shirt, you know, the brand, you know, let's say Boston College, Harvard, NYU, whatever it may be, we send it to them. Uh, one of the things that, you know, that, that I started doing now for clients is, or better yet, one of our clients got a, uh, had knee surgery. So, you know, instead of sending like a flowers or a fruit basket, like most do, I sent her a, um, a little bicycle that goes underneath the desk. So she, while she's sitting at her desk, she can, she, you know, she could spin. So I yeah. take a very active approach with clients and trying to keep them healthy and uh, <laughs> as well as wealthy. Nice. Well, and, and you, you did mention that earlier. Uh, you've also done an awful lot of activity with clients running different places. Let's, let's, let's hear about that. Yeah. So, you know, one of the things that happened to us, like everyone else during COVID was it changed the way we do business, right? Right, right, right now we're on Zoom. We would have thought of that we would be on Zoom years ago. It would be like, no, you got to sit in person to do an interview. Now this is the norm. You know, th th this became a way of connecting with mom and dad and grandma and grandpa through 2020. You know, but, you know, what I noticed with clients is a lot of them were, dare I say, getting depressed, right? They couldn't see their kids. You know, they couldn't go have Thanksgiving together. You know, it was sad and depressing. You know, so I felt that our clients needed us more than ever. So because we couldn't sit in the conference room, you know, our building wouldn't let us into the office. <laughs> you know, ground zero in New York City, you know, everything was closed. What I found was that by going for walks with clients, you know, we're going on bike rides with clients, it kind of changed the dynamic of our, our relationship. You know, number one, mm -hmm. you're outdoors at fresh air, they're moving, so they feel great. You know, what I also found is that by being out in nature, they were more open. You know, they were more open to talk about what, what, what their fears were and what kept them up at night and what they truly want to accomplish. So it gave us a new method of connecting. And with some clients, it actually gave them a new life. So uh, I'll give you a short story on, on, on something that happened. So, and, and many people at home can relate to this. So I have one client, he has over 7 million women in AUM and, right. and he was 62 and, you know, like most having the conversation about social security, right? Should I take it early? Should I wait full retirement age? Should I wait, you know, the general conversation. And I said to him, I said, look, respectfully, you don't need the money. You know, every year you wait, you're going to get that 8%, you know, increase in it. Yeah. So, you know, mathematically, why would you take it now? You don't need it. And he said, Ari, look at me. And if I could tell you to say he was morbidly obese, that would be an understanding. And this was a big guy. And he goes, I'd be lucky to make it to 66, let alone 70. So, you know, I said, okay, I, I get that. He goes, then he said something that kind of triggered it. He goes, I used to be like you. I used to be a swimmer when I was, you know, in college. I used to be fit. I used to be active. He goes, you don't realize this, but, you know, every year you're working hard. You know, you gain two pounds here, three pounds there. You know, as the year goes on, it compounds, you know, builds up. Eight, two pounds this year. You know, imagine getting two pounds every year for the next 30 years. You're not going to look as good in a bikini as you did back in the day. You know? Right. No one have a mental picture of us in bikinis, please. Not a sight for yourself. So yeah. he said, you know, I used to be active. So I said, you know what? I have an idea. You're going to come with me next week to my gym. We're going for a swing. No, Ari, we're not going to go this, that, the other. I said, look. I know you're cheap because you're rich. You're going to come to my gym. I'm going to get you a free pass for the week. So you don't have to pay. Okay, I'll go with you. But if you make fun of me in my bathing suit, you're fired. <laughs> I said I would know. So we went to the gym. We got in the pool. We started moving around a little bit. We started feeling good. And for those of you that 
uh, that, that are swimmers, you know that swimming is all about technique and form. It's not about muscle mass or strength. Like you don't see Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, beating Michael Phelps in the pool. So after like 10, 15 minutes, he got really comfortable in the water and he goes, let's race. And I said, well, with all due respect, you know, I, I race Ironmans. I could swim. He goes, I'm not talking 10 laps. I'm talking to one end of the pool to the other end of the pool. Let's race. I said, okay. And he goes, and if I think you're holding back, you're fired. I said, you know, you're a little too quick to fire. Are you looking for any excuse? He goes, well, <laughs> so we had, must we be a bad market. Yeah. What was that? Must be a bad market then. Right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So we ended up racing from one end of the pool to the other. And he beat me. He had the technique. I said he was like a fish in water. He used an example that he was a whale in water. But he beat me. Be he was going to have a heart attack at the end, but he was gliding through that water like, like, like a hot knife through butter. And what I realized with him after that is that a little spark in him. And what happened was that he kept going back to the gym and he kept swimming. And he bought a house upstate and he's been swimming there. And now he's, he's about to buy a, a condo in Florida. And guess what? He made sure that the condo has a pool for himself. So now he's down about 40 pounds. And he's enjoying himself. Nice. Yeah. So you had a big impact on him, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. And, and then I got to awesome. say, you know, making money for clients is one thing, but that's probably one of the highlights of my career. Changing lives. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, good. So you're really good at relationships. And uh, you talked about how, um, you know, this is a very complex world. This finance world it gets more complex every day, but you pretty much found a way to hit the easy button uh, with client about, about their investments. How do you, how do you do that? Ari? Yeah. So, so the, the first thing I do is I never use jargon, right? You know, anytime you use jargon, it's just an attempt to try to make yourself sound smarter to the client. You know, you want to make them feel dumb. So they look at you like, you know, it all. And then they put their trust in you. You know, I, I, I hate that approach. You know, if it's complex or complicated, that means you're selling something and you don't have to sell, you know, peace of mind and you don't have to sell investments. So what I do is I tend to use sports, you know, you know, sports analogies and sports metaphors because it's, it's more relatable to people, you know? So right. I'll, I'll give you an example. You know, when I try to talk to someone like one of my clients, kids about saving for retirement, talk to a 20 something year old or a 30 something year old about, you know, having a million, two million, three million, or four million dollars by the time they retire. They can't even imagine that much money because they never had it. Never had it. Yeah. You know, so the thing is, you know, it's impossible for them to say, it's hard, impossible for them to relate to it, to say, yeah, I want to save now because I'm going to have that much money later on. And I give the same example like running the marathon. You know, if I told you, you know, hey, Brian, go running 26.2 miles tomorrow, what would you say to me? I, I'd be game for it. Oh, okay. <laughs> you just throw it off. Um, most, yeah, most people say I don't even drive that far, right? You know, <laughs> yeah. you know, or if I told you run a marathon, run twenty six point two miles on Friday, you know, tell me how you would feel on Saturday. You know? Not sure I'd make it, but I'd try. Next, so what I tell people is that to, to run twenty six point two miles is impossible, but you can run one mile twenty six point two times. So imagine if you slowly started building up. You know what? Today, go for a walk for five minutes. Tomorrow, five minutes. Next week, 10 minutes. In three weeks from now, go for a mile. And then what happens is that over time, one mile could become two. That could become three. As you're doing it, you're going to start seeing that it's possible. And then as you build up, you're going to say, yeah, I could run 26.2 miles. And you'll be able to do it. The same thing with like a 401k or an IRA. Put in what you can today. I don't care if it's a dollar or a hundred dollars. Start somewhere. You got to start where you are and then slowly increase it over time. I mean, guess what's going to happen? You're going to start seeing that the dollar is building up and up and up. And then before you know it, like, yeah, I can get to a million, two million, three million, whatever it may be. It's all on your consistency and your discipline. Yes. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, well, good. So uh, trying to help clients understand and grow and, and uh, make, make sense of this whole finance world. Um, good. And you've changed lives. Ari, it's a great thing. Um, tell us about like your views of investing now. It, 
is this a good time to be an investor or are you cautious with these folks now or what what are you doing in your in your firm yes yeah, so, so obviously depending on you know how old or young you are you know if you're really young this is a phenomenal time to invest because it's always better to 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 invest after winter <laughs> not during the winter you know so this is kind of like a springtime for the market for for new investors you know for sure you know it's for older investors i would say there's some great opportunities there too you know Right now you have treasuries that are paying, you know, just about 5%, you know, mm -hmm. how much, how much money do we know people are sitting with in cash in the money markets, you know, these big banks earning, you know, 0 0.001, you know, you let your money work to you. Um, what we tend to do is we have a three bucket philosophy when it comes to investing, because what happened was that it's not so much that investments go down that drive people crazy it's when investments go down and they need the money that's when it drives them crazy so if a person's in their 40s or 50s and they have money in an ira or 401k they know they're not touching it anyway so they're not they're not panicking but imagine it you know like during COVID, right who knew maybe a couple of politicians but who knew COVID was happening and guess what the market went down people lost their jobs and then what happens to people is that they make emotional decisions, right? I need money because I don't have, you know, income from work anymore. And I got to pay these bills. Got to pay my rent. I got to pay my mortgage. Got to, you know, actually, want to hear a funny joke? Yeah. Okay. So during COVID, the government said you don't have to pay your rent and you don't have to pay your mortgage, right? Pretty big statement. But you still had to pay your cell phone bill. So, you know, my kids' iPhones were more important than the rent and the mortgage, according to the U.S. government. You know, exactly. So, so, so the thing is that what we do is we use a three bucket philosophy. You know, we make sure clients have about six months of re reserves. So we work with them to understand their budget. Keep, you know, career to six months. Six months is ideal. Three months is minimum in a separate account, and they may be doing that intuitively, checking savings, whatnot. Bucket number two is about one to three years worth of expenses. Okay. You know, so that's like, oh, you know, the roof leak, the pipe burst. I want to go on a family vacation. COVID came, you know, you have that reserve. Then bucket number three is your wealth building bucket. That's the money that you're saving and using to, you know, to help you achieve that work optional lifestyle. So right. what that does to your psyche is that like when COVID hit, like our clients are saying, all right, we're good. We had about three and a half years worth of liquidity. I hope COVID doesn't last that long, but I got three and a half years before I have to worry about my portfolio. You're in good shape. And exactly it. So, you know, I don't think anyone anticipated the market to recover as quickly as it did. We're, we're fortunate that it did. But imagine the people that had to liquidate in June of 2020 because they had to pay an expense because they didn't have no liquidity. So mm -hmm. our philosophy says, we know the markets could go down for any reason in any period of time for, you know, whatever, right? Black Monday happened to be, right? You know, I, unfortunately, 9-11 happened to be, you know? And what it is is that by having that sage team at, they're able to think clearly and, and, and without emotion, and they didn't have to scramble and take money out of their 401k and pay taxes and penalties. They didn't have to go into credit card debt at 24%. You know, they were their own bank. And that's what keeps people engaged. And they look at this market right now after last year's sell-off and they say, okay, what's on sale? Let's go shopping. So you have to have that mindset in order to look at the market through the lens of this is opportunistic versus the end of the world. Exactly. Well, good. I, I, um, I think... The key there is that the clients aren't worried. They're not making decisions in an in a environment of stress, right? Maybe one scenario when, everyone, when someone ever made a decision on the stress that it worked out well. Right. right. You know, you're not thinking, maybe you're going to marry me, but that's a different story. Uh, but your strategy is to, is to make sure your clients realize the, the full situation and understand the, the cushion and coverage that they really have. 
Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe clients don't always realize that, do they? All right. Yeah. Because what it, what it is with clients is that when things are happening to them, it's happening to them for the first time. So they think it's like the end of the world. You know, mom is sick and in the hospital. Oh my God, what am I going to do? You know, right. oh, I'm, you know, God forbid someone's getting divorced or their spouse passes away. You know, the kids are moving out to college. You know, the, the kids are getting married. You want to buy a second home and, you know, and there was a hurricane. To them, it's happening for the first time. But what we've learned is that history repeats itself and all these things have happened before. You know, mm-hmm. granted, history rhymes and doesn't repeat, but this is not like what we just saw. This was not just recently, Silicon Valley Bank. It's not the first time we saw a bank going under. It happened a little too often during our lifetime, but it's not the first time. You know, you, know, you, you, ha- you and I have a little, uh, you know, salt to go with our pepper and our hair. Yeah. It, you know, we looked at this market with, with all the tech stocks that were blowing up. We've been through the tech bubble. We've seen that movie before. We saw 2008 what happened. We saw the savings and loan crisis that happened in the 90s. You know, we saw, you know, we've seen flash crashes because of computers with the London whale. You know, we had Black Friday back in 1987. You know, there I say COVID, you know, we had, you know, HIV AIDS. You know, we had um, the this, this Spanish flu. We've had these events that have happened in the past. The only thing that we haven't seen happening was the splitting of the sea. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, but the thing is, we can learn from those experiences and just say to ourselves, we know life is going to throw curveballs our way. Inevitable. Instead of just waiting for it to happen, why not anticipate it? Why not consider long-term care? Because we know we're going to get older and need care at some point in time. You know, you know, people buy term insurance. Why? Because they have young kids. They don't, you know, they're saying if God forbid that situation happened, I want my family to be protected. So mm-hmm. market, we know it's going to go down. You know, Morgan also said it's what a 10% correction happen, happens once every like 11 months on average and a, and a 20% correction happens once every three years and and a 50% correction happens once every like 20 or 30 years. We know the stats are there. And we also know Murphy's Law. It's going to happen to us. We know we invest on Monday and it goes down on Tuesday. So why not just work out to the equation versus lying on Monday and hoping it goes up on Tuesday? It's a great message. So, um, all right, besides uh, the long-term planning and the, and the perspective that you give and the counseling you give to clients, are there any new ideas that, or actually caused by this crazy pandemic that we went through uh, that you're showing clients? Uh, is it Bitcoin or is it uh, real estate's attractive again? What, is there anything interesting that you're sharing new, something new with clients right now? So I, I will say this. I'm of the Warren Buffett style of investing and in investing what you know. You know, I'll, I'll touch upon... Like for Bitcoin to me, it's very speculative. And most people that are buying Bitcoin are hoping it's a lottery ticket for them. You know, the conversation that I have surrounding Bitcoin is if you truly believe that Bitcoin is going to replace the US as the currency in the United States or the world currency, I want you to imagine this. If that were to happen and the dollar was meaningless, that means the US government is out of business. And if the U.S. government is out of business, how are you going to turn on your computer? There's no Wi-Fi, you know, let little, little alone like I'm picturing like Mad Max, you know, movies, you know, no U.S. government, no Social Security, no Medicare, no Medicaid, no Army. You know, it's going to be to say it's a wild, all West would be understated. You know, I, I think that Bitcoin is probably more relatable to the younger generation as their version of digital gold than, you know, than our generation and the generations older than us. Um, sure. You know, from a compliance standpoint, it's a, it's a, it's private security, so we can't touch it, you know? So I just tell people, if you're considering it, you know, understand that if it was gone tomorrow, would it change your life? And for most, the answer, right. you know, versus, you know, if, you know, one of these big banks or if Apple was gone tomorrow, you feel it. So, you know, I'm sticking to tried and true strategies. You know, 
Like I said, I like treasuries at these levels. You know, there's nothing wrong with the big boring blue chip stocks. You know, there's nothing wrong with, you know, I'll put it to you like this. I think it was like, like now I think BlackRock was saying the 60, 40 portfolio is dead, right? They're saying you shouldn't invest in fixed income anymore. Look at alternative investments. Yeah, they sound sexy and sweet, but what's wrong with treasuries and CDs that are paying four or 5%? Maybe they don't make a lot of money off of that, but what's wrong with that? And if you're retired, you know, there's nothing wrong with getting that income stream and not having the headache. So I, I, I try to stay away from the flashy stuff because what I found is here today, gone tomorrow. Yeah. Makes sense. Well, good. Um, so, you know, we're nearing the end of our discussion today. And, you know, I just, to give you some perspective, there's about 300 people that will see this video and over the next year, probably a thousand, mostly people in our industry. Uh, so is there a message that you'd like to send to all the brethren in our industry, besides all the great stuff you've said today? Like, what are the keys to your success? And, and uh, what would you like to tell everybody today? If you were in an auditorium with all thousand of those people, what would you say? Yeah, I, I, I would tell them this. You know, don't be afraid of the technology wave that's coming. You know, you know, I, I don't fear robo advisors or any of that stuff, and neither should you, because this is a relationship business. Clients need us. They need our perspective. A computer can't give back. They need our hand holding. They need us to help them with their planning. You know, we push them to get it done. A good advisor is going to make sure that a client gets their wills and their trust and healthcare proxy taken care of. Even though we don't do it ourselves, I feel it's our responsibility to encourage our clients to do that. Because again, what's the point of working so hard and building and saving if you're going to give a lot of that money back to Uncle Sam, you know, versus if you plan the right way? You know, that, that's step one for what I would tell all of my brother and sister advisors out there. Number two, lean into technology. I know change is hard, but technology can help make your life easier. It can help automate things. You know, part of the reason why I started a YouTube channel was that I found that it could help amplify my voice. Instead of having the same conversation a hundred times over, I could send a YouTube video to a client and they feel that connection. You know, it worked wonders. The, the comments I got during COVID time, it's like, Ari, I appreciate the video. I feel like you're with me. You know, we're together, we're in this. So it goes a long way. And I would say just like going to the gym for the first time sucks, right? Yeah. Go to the gym, you know, actually maybe not the first time because you feel good when you're in the gym, but the days after you're sore, why is it that you're sore? Because you're flexing a new muscle. So some of this new technology might feel uncomfortable because you're flexing a new muscle for the first time. So take it slow. Take it easy. It's okay. You know, there's nothing wrong with starting where you are and then it letting it evolve over time. You know, I would say that would probably be my biggest message to you because if you don't embrace this technology, like imagine every advisor out there is using email, right? Imagine if you would have rejected emails years ago and you didn't embrace it. How much harder would your life be? And really, how many clients would you have left? You know, it became so normal, just like Zoom. It sucked in the beginning, but now it's just, it's like breathing. So don't be afraid to embrace technology. And the last thing I would say is pay it forward. You know, we're a dying breed. You know, share your experience with the younger generation. Let's push them into the industry. You know, let them get involved because if we don't, then the computers and the robots will take over. You know, we have to train and educate that next generation of advisors. You know, if not, we're in trouble. Nice. Well, those are all great messages, Ari. Uh, thank you, Ari Baum, for being with us today in the Financial Advisors Workshop. Uh, we'll leave it there. So thank you, Ari. No problem. Thank you for having me. All right. Okay. And everybody, so that's it for today. Um, thanks for being with us today again on the Financial Advisors Workshop, everyone. We'll be back shortly with another great interview. Uh, Ari is a clear example of some of the best of our industry, and we're going int to introduce uh, some other great people very shortly. Uh, so this is Four Star Wealth Financial Advisors Workshop signing off for today. Thank you, everybody. 